Well, hello everybody. I hope that you're doing well out there and that everything's going your way today. I wanna to ask you a simple question. Are you a morning person or a night person? Now, most of us are one or the other. Most of us prefer the early morning or the late night. Now, there may be some, I know there are some who uh, prefer both. I, I've got a friend who stays up every night till about midnight and he gets up every morning about 4.30 or 5 in the morning and he just does great. He says all he needs is about four or five hours of sleep he never has a problem. And he's sharp as a tack. I don't doubt that. Now, me, I'm not, I'm not that way. If I'm up at 4.30 in the morning, the only, thing, the only thing I'm trying to do is go back to sleep. Because I've noticed if I start my day too early, by about 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock at night, or 10 o'clock at night, you know, I'm starting to get sleepy. And I don't want to be sleepy at that time of night because that is my favorite time of day. I want to be alert and awake and I want to be able to enjoy the nighttime. So I would say that I'm more of a night owl than a super early morning person. Like right now, it is 1051 at my house when I'm recording this video. Now, you're probably listening to it in the daytime, but I'm recording it uh, at almost 11 o'clock at night because it's just my favorite time of the day. And I read a verse the other night and it spoke to me out of the Psalms and it really spoke to my heart. And I felt like that after I was thinking and processing that, it was kind of like God just said, do a devotional on that because somebody needs to hear that. So I want to give you the verse. If you're home and you have a pen, this might be worth writing down. Psalm 74 and verse 16. Psalm 74 and verse 16. And the verse says this, the day is yours, the night also is yours. And where it says yours there, it's capitalized in my Bible because my Bible, New King James, capitalizes pronouns for God. And so it's saying the day is God's and the night also is God's. And so just like God made the daytime, God made the nighttime. Now, I think we're all familiar with the passage in the scripture that emphasize the, the special features that the early morning hours have. For example, in Psalm 5 and verse 3, the psalmist said, now, my voice you shall hear in the morning, O God. I will direct it to you and I will look up. And so the psalmist uh, loved the early morning hours. Mark one thirty five. it says of Jesus, having arisen a long while before daylight, he went out to a solitary place and there he prayed. And so Jesus loved the early morning hours. He got up early and, and he prayed to the Father. We know the resurrection took place early on that first Easter Sunday morning. And so there is something very special uh, about the early morning hours. But again, for me, as much as I, I certainly appreciate the morning, I really am more of a, of a night person and I'm more, I'm more fully engaged at nighttime even than I am in those super early morning hours. And so when I read that verse the other night, the day is yours, the night also is yours. I actually found that verse in another translation that says it this way, the day is yours and also the night. I wanna say that again. You might wanna memorize that. The day is yours and also the night. When I read that, it was like God said, not, not only did I make the daytime, but I also made the nighttime. There's something special about nighttime. Now that doesn't mean that everybody has to stay up until midnight. In fact, we probably should go to bed a little earlier than that, most of us. But it means this, whatever time we go to bed, we should spend some of the time at nighttime before we go to bed or after we get in the bed, meditating and thinking about God. Let me give you another verse in Psalm 63. And in verse number six, David said, he's praying to God. He said, I will meditate on you in the night watches. And so David had learned even when he, when he went to bed, he's lying there in his bed. He's looking up at the, at the ceiling and he's meditating on God. There's something special about the nighttime. Now, the reason I'm doing this devotional is because sometimes in life, when we go through a, a lo the loss of a loved one, when we go through a painful situation, when, uh, you know, grief of any kind, or uh, maybe we're battling depression, or maybe anxiety, or maybe this pandemic, and it's kind of got the world upside down a little bit, Sometimes people who are battling certainly anxiety and depression or, or just sadness or loneliness, all those things seem somehow to get magnified at night. And sometimes people think, man, I just dread it when the sun goes down. 
I don't like the nighttime anymore. And I'll say this, even though I'm a night owl and I, I love the nighttime, there have been, not a lot, but there have been some nights in my life going through different seasons where I have just thought, oh, I wish it would hurry up and be morning. I wish the sun would come up because now it's dark and it's it's depressing. And, you know, whatever I might have been feeling during the day in the negative seems to become magnified at night. And maybe you can relate to that. Maybe today there's only one person who can relate to that. Maybe I'm doing this devotional for one person who is going through a season in life where you say, you know what? All of a sudden, I'm dreading the nighttime. I'm not enjoying the nighttime. You need to memorize that verse out of Psalm 74, 16. The day is yours and also the night. Just like God made the morning, God made the evening, and God made the nighttime. And God is as much with you at nighttime as he is in the morning. That's one of the things I love about nighttime. It's still. It's quiet. I can think, I can relax. I, I, I just, I just, it's, that's why I say, I don't want to get up so early in the morning that by the time I get to this time of night, I'm walking around my house like a zombie, like I don't know where I am. No, I mean, I want to be alert. I want to be sharp. And I want to be able to enjoy this part of the day. It's just how I'm wired. Some of you are more like that in the morning. You say, I want to go to bed super early so I can be that way in the morning. Well, that's fine. But in this devotional, I'm talking to the person who is saying, you know what, John? I'm, I'm going through a time in my life right now where I am dreading the darkness. You know, a lot of us, when we were super young, uh, probably didn't like nighttime too much or didn't like the darkness too much. You know, you get in bed and, and uh, you get scared uh, that some monster is going to jump out from under the bed or, or somebody's going to come get you or something. And so, you know, a lot of times when you're a little kid, real super young, you, you cry or you go jump in your parents' bed or you call for them to come lay, lay, lie in there with you until you go to sleep. And, and, and we all outgrow that, you know, later on, even in our childhood or, you know, hopefully, hopefully we outgrow that. But sometimes later on in life, it's like people can, you, you can revert back to that, not that extreme or not in that same way, but where you just kind of get to a place where you say, oh, I hate the night. And I can't tell you through the years how many people I've spoken with who have said, you know what, John, because of this loss I've been through or this grief I'm experiencing or, or this depression or this loneliness and isolation that I have right now, oh, they say, I just hate it when it gets dark. I hate the night. And I just can't wait for the sun to come up. And I understand that. I have experienced that. But I want to say this to you. I, want to, I think I just said it, but I want to say it again. God is with you at nighttime just as much as God is with you in the daytime. The day is yours and also the night. And so I just encourage you to, during the nighttime, to focus on the presence of God. There's a verse in the scripture, another verse, Isaiah 45, 3, that says it this way. God is speaking. He said, I will give you the treasures of darkness. You know, most of us don't think about darkness as being a treasure. We think about, man, the treasures of darkness. What does that mean? Well, what God is saying is sometimes in life you go through a dark season and you discover something that you never would have discovered if you weren't going through a dark season. Tonight I was in my kitchen sink. I was putting some dishes in the dishwasher. I looked up and the moon tonight, I think, is the most beautiful that I've ever seen the moon. Just what you'd call a, a harvest moon. It's just shining so brightly tonight. But you know, if you think about it, that moon was shining brightly today at noon. That moon didn't just show up tonight. It's been up there all day. But I wasn't able to see the moon until it got dark. When it got dark, now I can see something I couldn't see when it was bright. Well, that's it, it happens in life sometimes like that. Sometimes in life, when things are easy and we're not having any problems, you know, we'd say life is bright. Well, great, praise God, that's a blessing. But sometimes in those seasons, you miss things that you could see uh, only in the darkness. And so God talks about, I'm going to give you treasures of darkness. Well, what's true uh, circumstantially and metaphorically there is also true literally. At nighttime, I mean literally, when the sun goes down and it's dark outside, there are treasures there that you might not experience during the daytime. Quietness, stillness, the ability to hear from God, and the ability to be aware of God's presence, to enter that place in your own spirit, that, that just that place of deep peace and deep relaxation 
and where you just have what I call a strong, heavy awareness of the presence of God. And I experienced that in the morning and in the afternoon and at night, but I, I certainly experienced that at night. And, and I just love that. And so I just feel led today or tonight to say to the person out there who's saying, you know what, John, it's a strange thing. I hadn't even told anybody. I'd be too embarrassed to say it. But I'm having a hard time at nighttime. I want to just remind you that just as the day is God's, so is the night. You don't have to be afraid of the dark. You don't have to dread the night. God is right there with you. And uh, focus on him and his presence. And if you'll do that, I think you'll come to a place where you say, you know what? Not only am I not dreading the night, I'm not dreading the dark, I'm actually enjoying it. Because in the stillness and in the quietness, I'm able to experience God's presence, maybe in a little deeper way than I would be if it were the brightness of day and life is happening a million miles an hour and there's noise and there's action and there's people and all this. Well, that, we thank God for those times. But we also need to learn to... Uh, to enjoy the quietness and to enjoy uh, the nighttime. Whatever time we go to bed, we still have some nighttime, most of us, before we uh, go to sleep at night. And if you're a shift worker and have to go to bed, you know, at a different thing, you have to apply this in a slightly different way. Uh, for you, your nighttime is out there working. And so in the nighttime, uh, look for those treasures and look for God's presence and just know that he is with you. And you know what? You may experience God in a fresh new way. Psalm 74, 16. This is your assignment for today. Memorize this verse. The day is yours and also the night. Don't be afraid of the darkness. God is with you. Have a great day and have a great night tonight.